Shabbat Shalom, my beautiful family. It's a wonderful privilege to be able to stand before you today to share with you what is happening in the spiritual realm and with Yahuwah's children all over the world. But before I continue, I would like us to pray. Our Father in heaven, I thank you for this wonderful opportunity that you've given me to communicate with the children and to share with them and to fellowship with them once again. Rock HaKadesh, I ask that you take total and complete control over everything that I'm going to say. Let me not say anything you don't want me to say. Let me only speak what you want me to speak for your children. Let the words that I'm, that I'm going to speak, let it barack, let it edify the hearers in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. Enable us not only to be hearers of your word, but also the words of your word. In Yahushua HaMashiach's name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, it's a wonderful privilege for us today that today is a Shabbat. Not only is it Shabbat, but it's also the Feast of Sukkot. And according to the book of Vayika, chapter 23, and that is Leviticus in English, let's turn with me to Leviticus chapter 23. From verse 33, you will see that Yahuwah commanded us to observe these days um, and this feast day. And it's something that we should not take lightly because that is the only way you can prove that you love him. In fact, when you love him, you'll see that you'll be so willing. You'll be, you'll, be, you'll be in love with him so much that he wants to do everything he has commanded you to do. So that you'll not be left out in what is happening with his children worldwide. Now, I'd like to read from the book of Leviticus, Verica chapter 23 from verse 33. It says this, Yahuwah said to Moshe, Tell the people of Israel, on the 15th day of the seventh month is a feast of Sukkot for seven days to Adonai. So my brother's beautiful family, I want to tell you that the Feast of Sukkot officially started yesterday sundown, um, that's Friday sundown, and now today is the Shabbat sundown. It's going to start, it's going to continue through till sundown the next Shabbat. And um, I want to encourage uh, every one of us out there that really loves our Creator, the Creator of heaven and earth, that has instituted this feast and this commands to really keep to them, because that's the only way in this end time that you showed how much you love Him. And then it says this, on the first day, this verse 35 I'm reading now, on the first day there is to be a holy convocation. Do not do any kind of ordinary work. So today is the first day, and... We are Barak that is also false on the Shabbat, and we all know the rules and regulations concerning the Shabbat observance. So we are not to do any kind of ordinary work. And then 36 says, For seven days you are to bring an offering made by fire to Adonai, to Yahuwah. I rather I replace it with Yahuwah. And then, now that seven days you are to bring an offering. Your offering is any kind of sacrificial gift that you can give to your neighbor, you can give to a brother or to a sister in need. You are giving it to Yahuwah. Remember what Yahushua says in the new renewed covenant. He said that when we help the poor, when we help our brothers or sisters in need, please, can you stop making noise? Stop that, please. When we help our brothers and sisters in need, um, what's going to happen is this: that you are actually doing it to Him. Sorry, my children are playing at the park. Can you please pause, please? I'm sorry for the interruption, and this video is unedited, so. Um, it's because I'm at the park with the children and then they're playing and making a hell of noise. But let's continue. And it says this, it's an, oh, you should bring an offering made by fire to Yahuwah. So my brothers and my sisters, if you know that brother, that sister that made something, that you can do something for the person, even if you don't have any, um, any money or any clothes or food to give to the person, you can give your time. You can make a call. You can encourage the person. You can edify the person. You can pray for the person. For these seven days, this is what Yahuwah wants us to do. And this is the way we can also honor it. Hallelujah. And this is, I'm saying this by the inspiration of the Ruach HaKadosh because of course you know that in this time and period, we should not, we cannot, we are, we are not sacrificing goats or cows or whatever for Yahuwah. So the only offering made by fire is talking about offering that, that really someone really needs. And an offering that is sacrificial, that comes from your heart, that comes from your soul. Hallelujah. And then it says this, on the eighth day, you are to have a holy convocation and bring an offering made by fire to Adonai. The eighth day is um, actually the next Shabbat. Um, that's what it's talking about. He said a holy convocation is fellowship. Now, as you can see, we, now because we, those that are really serving Yahuwah and truth and spirit, are scattered all over the world, 
it's very difficult for us to gather together as Yahuwah has commanded for us to fellowship together. But we are, do, we are already feeling that aspect by doing it online. And we are fellowshipping together using the technology that is available to do um, to fellowship according to what is written in the scriptures. And then now he says this, you are to have a holy convocation and bring an offering made by fire to Yahuwah. It is a day of public assembly. Do not do any kind of ordinary work. So just like I said, you have a rat, that even that eighth day falls on a Shabbat. And so hence the rules and regulations of Shabbat follows. Not to do any kind of ordinary work. Like what's talking about ordinary work? It's talking about secular work. It's talking about work where you're doing something personal to earn a living, to get money. On that day, you have to really honor it, you have to sacrifice it to our Heavenly Father, you have to sacrifice it to Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Amen. And then, um, press post. I'm going to read from verse 37 of the same chapter. He said, These are the designated times of Yahuwah that you are to proclaim as holy convocations and bring an offering made by fire to Yahuwah. Of course, we are not doing burnt offering and sacrifices in this time. A burnt offering, a grain offering, a sacrifice and drink offerings, each on its own day. Besides the Shabbats of Adonai, your gifts, all your vows, and all your voluntary offerings that you give to Adonai, Yahuwah. Or rather, it's Yahuwah. So, hallelujah. So, you can see that every day, he's talking about this festival of Sukkot. Every day, you should decide a sacrificial offering you're going to give. Like it says here, it's a grain offering, sacrifice, and drink offerings each on its own day. So you don't, if you're going to give a, a drink offerings, it should have a day you set about. For example, you can say for your, to yourself, um, tomorrow I'm going to buy a bottle of wine, non-alcoholic wine. I'm going to go and share with my neighbor. I'm going to buy it for my family. Let's sit down and sal salah and serve all the moment with our Heavenly Father on this day of support. That is drink offering to Yahuwah. And so what are you going to do? You're going to consecrate that wine that you're going to buy and you're going to lift it up and say let Yahuwah barack it and then you share and you drink. Then next one is grain offering. Maybe you can bring, of course I know that flies me from grain. You can make some, um, bake some sweet bread, make some bakery, you know, bake some things and then you can say, okay, you want to go and share with your neighbor or give to your neighbor or with your family or with your friend. So now, that is now replacing grain offering. That is a form of a grain offering. You see, so if one has no excuse not to keep this festival, this period, this feast, this period, because you have the knowledge. And even if you're just hearing it for the first time, you don't know about it, Yahuwah knows your heart, whatever you can do and however you can be able to observe it, do it according to the leading of the Ruach HaKadosh. And surely you're not going to miss out in the seal that Yahweh is placing upon his children these last days, those that keep his commands. Hallelujah. Now, someone may ask, what's really the importance of this? Why suddenly now we are all keeping the feast and all those things? Uh, we are all keeping the feast. And why must we do that? Now, I would not, um, what do they call it? I would like to answer the question using the book of Revelation. The importance of keeping this feast on these last days is because in the last days a lot of people are going to turn from serving Yahweh in truth and the spirit. They are going to turn away from him, preaching doctrines of men and of demons, so that the seal that Yahweh is going to seal to preserve his children from the tribulation that is coming will not, uh, will, will not be on them. And that is the important, that's the only way you're going to escape what is coming because I tell you that great tribulation is coming up upon the earth. And only those that keep his commands and follow him that are going to be protected. Hallelujah. Now, um, I want to read the book of Revelation. I'm looking for the verse. Okay. The book of Revelation chapter 14, let's look at this from verse 1. He said, Then I looked, and there was the Lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him were 144,000, who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. I'm going to, I'm going to explain it later, but that's not where I want to. I want to, what do they call it? That's not where I want to focus. Let's jump to verse 3. He said, Then we are singing a new song before the throne, and before the four living beings and the elders, and no one could learn the song except the one for the four thousand who had been ransomed from the world. Okay? Now verse 4 says this. These are the ones who have not defiled themselves with women, for they are virgins. They follow the lamb wherever he goes. 
They've been transformed from among humanity as first fruits for Yahuwah and the Lamb. On their lips was found no lie. They are without defect. Now, hallelujah, hallelujah. That reminds me of a dream that I had, that I had, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now the interpretation is coming to me, but it's for, it's for another day. He said now, he said that these are virgins. Now virgin, if you look at it scripturally, Yahweh calls virgins, those um, people virgins, those that don't play the hard lottery. When he says you're playing the hard lottery, it means you are serving other gods because you know that our El of Israel is a jealous Yahuwah, is a jealous God. So now when he says you are a virgin, it means that you are serving him in truth and in spirit. You are not compromising with the world. He said, for they are not defied with women. Women is talking about her lottery, is talking about other religious traditions. So now in these last days, our Heavenly Father is going to seal those, not those practicing religion, but those that are following him in spirit and in truth. I encourage you, my dear family, take the Torah by yourself, read it for yourself and obey what is there. Do not listen to any human interpretation of, of say, or, or, or religion saying, this is passed away, this you do, this don't do. Just take the Torah from Genesis and then start obeying. Just make sure you follow what Yahuwah is saying because he has already instructed that this should be followed throughout all generations. Hallelujah. And another characteristic of Yah's end time, Yah's end time servants or Yah's end time children this last day is that on their lips there will be found no lie. They will not lie to you when they're coming to speak to you they'll come and tell you the words of yah without adulterating or painting it or trying to tell you lies to push you to do things that they want you to do hallelujah first and foremost this this is a very very clear remember what yahusha said in in uh in one of the gospels he said by the fruits you know them so that's the characteristics of your servants this end time you will see the, you see that they will love to keep and obey his commandment just as it is they will not say no i'm following this religion like my religion does not ask me to do this or do that no this is not a matter of religion this this is a matter of being sealed Remember, if you read the book of Revelation, I think chapter 3, it's talking about the church of Philadelphia that Yahuwah is going to keep from the hour of trial that's coming upon the whole earth. My brothers and my sisters, if you really want to enter into the covenant, into what Yahuwah is doing this time, and if you want to be among those that are going to partake in the exodus that is coming for Yah's children, please start now to begin to keep all these commandments. I pray that the Ruach HaKadosh give you the ability that Yahuwah empowers you, puts his love in your heart for you to keep his commands in the name of Yahusha Hamashiach. Shabbat Shalom and have a happy Sukkot celebration from now to the next feast day and um, to the next Shabbat Shalom.